right, so I've got my robot chassis and all the parts I need to make my working platform. I've gone ahead and put the bolts in place. These are just the M6 by like 60mm bolts. And these are the new mounts we've got. So these are two piece instead of the other ones I had before which were one piece, so they're much easier to to put on. So let's get to work. Um, everything's mounted down with Velcro as well, which makes it really easy and quick. Now I'm going to put this box here, which will house our battery. So as I was saying before, you want something hard and rigid around your battery, just in case something bumps it. This is just a really quick sort of test platform, so this is going to be fine. There's no way I'd enter this into combat. Okay, so I've got everything mounted in place, and I'm almost ready to start wiring it up. However, with my switch, I'm not sure if it's actually turned on or not, because it's a screw type switch. So, this is a perfect opportunity to use the multimeter. So, I'm going to put it on continuity mode, which basically, when the leads touch, it beeps. So, all I need to do is go between, that there, I'm with the battery, so you can see. Put that there. So what I'm going to do is go between this lead. You should always do this with no power connected as well, because you can blow the multimeter up. So that goes into the switch, and then goes here. So the switch is not on, which is great. But I want to just give it a check. So I'm going to get the Allen key it came with. And Tighten it up. And there we go. So you can see the switch that's now on. And that's off, so back it out. Cool. So now I know my switch is off, I can carry carry on with wiring the machine. So I've got the power comes in here through this plug, and I want it to go to my speed controllers. So Red is positive, and black is negative. So because we're using DC direct current, it only flows in one direction. If you plug your speed controllers in backwards, if you plug the negative into the positive on the battery, they are going to blow up instantly. Irreparably, and it's a plague which will probably happen to you at some stage, hopefully not with an expensive controller. But that's just a hard lesson to learn, just try not to do it. That's why I've got plugs, because if you hard solder these to your battery, it's really easy to mess it up. Whereas XT60s have a positive and negative sign on them, the negative is just a line, the positive is a plus, and it's really hard to stuff it up. So I highly recommend using plugs like this, because they're polarized, which means they can't be swapped around. So, I'll carry on, plugging the second controller in. So these plugs are what we plug into the receiver. These are our PWM plugs. So, what these speed controllers do is they convert the main battery voltage down to 5 volts, which is all we need to power our receiver. So if we put the main battery voltage into our receiver, it will just blow up because it's too high. So, back in the old days you'd have to use a receiver pack, like a smaller battery pack just for the receiver, which was another point of failure, but because now these controllers have a built-in power supply for your receiver, it's no worries. It's called a BEC, Battery Eliminator Circuit. So, I'm going to plug this in here. It will definitely take trial and error working out which plugs you need on your receiver to correspond to which throttle channel or whatever you're using. Uh, with this one, it's we use the aileron and elevator, because this is actually originally designed for aircraft, radio control aircraft. So that's what I want to use for my up and down, left and right uh, stick movements. I'll put the battery in place. So now we've got our wires from the battery to our speed controllers. We need to plug our speed controllers into our drive motors. So I'm going to plug these in. Once again, people often hardwire these, so this will be soldered directly to your, your motor. But in a competition, if these break or get damaged, it's awesome to have spares with plugs already connected because you can just swap them out 
and it's really quick and much less stressful so I highly recommend doing it these plugs really aren't that expensive and although I've done it in the past, hard wiring um, from now on I'm pretty much just going to be using plugs for everything because it just makes it more awesome so yeah, so now all I'm going to do is add these nuts to these mounts and tighten them up that's going to take a little bit of time and then I'll power up the platform and show you how it works okay so now everything's wired up and we've got our mounts screwed down the one final thing to add is our safety light so this is going to be plugging into our receiver on the spare channel and there we go so before I plug the battery into the robot I'm just going to check all the wiring connections and you've noticed what I've done is I've actually unplugged one of the speed controllers so if anything is catastrophically wrong, if anything's backwards somehow, but the wire's red, but it thinks it's negative, whatever, it's only going to blow up one speed controller. This is a hard-learned lesson. You only test things incrementally. So, if you can unplug any of the systems, just test it part by part till you're happy, and then you have a much better chance of getting success rather than blowing everything up instantly and crying. So, I'm going to check. So, it's got positive into there, into the switch. Positive runs down, splits there into the two speed controllers, goes positive into there, and then into the into the motors. So I'm happy with that. The leads on the receiver are correct. You've got the brown on these ones is negative, red is positive, and the yellowy orange one is the, the signal. So that's where it sends a signal from your movements for, to the receiver to the ESCs. So I'm going to go ahead and plug this in. Remember I tested before to make sure the switch was off, so nothing's going to happen. Okay, so now I'm ready to turn this machine on. But before you do anything, you always need to make sure your transmitter is turned on first. This is rule number one before turning any sort of platform on. So, got my transmitter turned on. All the sticks are centered. So I'm now going to turn the switch on. And if everything goes right, it should... There we go. The power light comes on. That's telling me the receiver's got power and the machine has power. So, let's see if I got the channels right. So, it should be either up or down. There we go. Cool. Okay, so that channel's correct. What I'm going to do is power it down. Plug this one in, that looks good, power it back up with the res making sure the transmitter's on, alright so that channel's not correct, and the terrible cooling fan that motor's scraping on something. That's how good quality these drills are. <laughs> right, so I'm going to turn it off. And because I've plugged everything like this, I can easily trace it back to this plug here. Right, so aileron was incorrect, so I'm going to go to rudder. So even after doing this for six years, I still get it wrong. It's just, you just do it by trial and error. So, transmitter's on. Turn the robot on. Alright, see, I'm not actually doing anything here, and this is why you do it off the off the, the table. This is actually a, a trim setting on your radio, which is these buttons here. And see, it shouldn't actually be moving, but you can see the trim's 16. So, I'm going to be moving this to zero, and it stops. Because these are bot bits ESCs, they have their z centers set at zero. Um, they won't, you know, try to calibrate to some horribly offset trim, which is really good, like some other controllers do. So they're actually quite safe. As long as everything's at zero, nothing's going to move. So, you'll notice, however, that's not really going to make me go forward and back, is it? What I need to do is mixing. So, a robot like this is much like a tank. You need to drive both motors forwards to go forwards, backwards to go backwards, but you need one to go forwards and the other to go backwards to turn. So there's a few ways people do this. You can buy a mixer that goes between the plugs of your speed controller and your receiver. However, if you spend $300 on a controller like this, like I did a few years ago, 
and now they're only $50, you can do onboard mixing with your controller. So I'm going to set that up and turn the camera off because it takes a few seconds. Alright, so what I've done is I've set up mixing on my radio. So now when I drive forwards, and it drives both motors forwards. And left, and then left, and then right. Backwards. Cool. And that's basically all there is to it. Most combat robots have just this basic system in them. It'll just be covered in steel. And they might have a weapon which might be another channel. So they might, for example, have a brushless motor driving a spinning disc. So all I have is something like this plugged in as well. And then that might be plugged into something like that off the battery. So it's really just a variation of this theme, but all robots have these basic components. And no matter what platform you're building, it should always have a light and it should always have a switch. It's absolutely imperative that you have those two items. And it's also against the rules to not have them in any sort of competition.